that Tahereh Justice Center got started 20 years ago as a result of my involvement in a case when I was a law student involving a young woman from Togo, West Africa, who was fleeing female genital mutilation and a forced polygamous marriage. At that time, in 1995, our laws did not provide for refugee status for women and girls fleeing forms of persecution that were being inflicted simply because they were women. I argued her case before the immigration judge. It was appealed ultimately to the highest immigration court in the United States, where it received a good deal of media attention, and at that level, she won. And her case then set national legal precedent, opening up the doors to what we now call gender-based asylum. There was also commercial interest in her story of escape, in my story of helping her as a law student, and she and I wrote a book together. I used my portion of the proceeds of that book to start the Tahereh Justice Center. Tahereh's clients come from all over the world. They come from every continent, every country. They come here seeking protection and safety when their own countries can't provide it for them. Some of our clients have experienced really horrific violence. They have experienced female genital mutilation or cutting. They've experienced forced marriages, domestic violence. These are forms of violence that women and girls experience more than men do simply because of their gender. Araceli was the second client that I had with Tare Justice Center. I was very nervous to meet Araceli because of the trauma that she'd experienced. Mi país de origen es Honduras. Mi pueblo es pequeño, pero no son unidos. Cada quien sale adelante con sus problemas solo. Cuando tal vez yo salía así como a bodas y había fiestas, cosas así, él me, me trataba de sacar. Por último, um, fue cuando me secuestró. Él dijo, es que yo no quiero estar contigo, yo no quiero estar contigo, yo quiero estar con mi mamá, solo tengo 15 años. Él me rompió mi camisa. Y fue cuando comenzó y me violó. Ay, yo me sentí una mujer sucia. Bueno, una niña sucia porque estaba yo um, joven, no tenía nada que ver con nadie. Pues el niño fue creciendo con, con mi mamá y conmigo. A ese señor llegó a mi casa una tarde que mi mamá no estaba. Me tumbó la puerta de la casa y llegó y me volvió a violar. Pero nunca pensé que yo iba a quedar embarazada de Daniel. Being traumatized by domestic violence, human trafficking, or other forms of gender violence can make it very hard to tell and share the details of your story. We work very hard developing a relationship with each of the women who approaches us seeking help so that she feels she can open up to us. Because of the significant trauma that our clients have experienced, they often need to have therapy or other assistance in working through their ability to tell their story, which is central to gaining asylum and immigration relief in their cases. So our social services uh, staff connect them with vital social service resources such as um, mental health professionals, medical professionals who can assist them and help them work through the traumatic experience of retelling their story. Araceli could tell us the things that happened to her that she never told anybody else. And sometimes she could only do it in the quietest voice because she was so ashamed uh, of the things that had happened to her. And that was probably the hardest thing because 
she didn't ask for them. Él me golpeó y me hizo así. Yo caí sentada. Y los niños le dice, Juan, ¿y por qué le pegas a mi mami? Le dice. Fue cuando, cuando él me lo puso aquí. Y ya de aquí yo ya no me acuerdo nada. Lo que siento es algo blanco. Yo digo que es un sueño o no sé. Yo escuchaba que mi papá lloraba. Entonces vino mi papá y me dijo, mira hija, me dijo, la verdad, me dijo, me duele decirte esto, me dijo, pero te golpeó, te pegó un tiro a ti y te mató los dos niños, me dijo. Y los niños murieron. Todos me odiaban en el pueblo. Bueno, yo siempre les tuve miedo de que ellos me, me mataran y mataran a mi hija. When a woman comes to the United States, she may have nothing but her courage and her hope for a brighter future. Tahare Justice Center tries everything we can to offer holistic services from case management uh, to placement in shelter all the way through legal services to the very last stages of her process. It's just a drop in the bucket for what a woman needs to get from a victim to being a survivor and an advocate. By the time our clients come to us, they are already heroes. They have already decided to leave. Some of them have traveled through deserts, over oceans. They've had to scramble together resources. They've had to navigate a system where they don't understand the law. They don't know the language and they don't know the systems. And many of them have had to do that with infants in tow, young children who are dependent on them, and with absolutely no resources and with ostracism and exclusion from their families. It's incredible what they go through in order to seek justice. And it's a real privilege to be able to support them in their journey and in their courage. Y encontrando la organización de Tajere, me he sentido bien. En mi caso, recomendarlas a, a la organización Tajere, darles mi apoyo como mujer pues que he sufrido. Son casos que no me gustaría que otra madre lo pasara. So just imagine the courage it must take then to leave everything she knows behind and come somewhere where when she says, I'm done and I need help and I need protection, she might actually get that. And that's what we're here to do in the United States. We have laws that have been passed by our Congress that allow us to offer safe haven and protection to a woman, a girl, a child, a family that has experienced the kind of violence some of us can't even imagine. And so we use the law here at Tahare to help those women and kids get the kind of protection they need, what they deserve, and what they're entitled to under the law. But the complexity of the system and the inaccessibility of the system right now means that without a lawyer, you have only a 16% chance of success. With any lawyer, you have 47% chance of success. And with the Tahare Justice Center's legal representation, you have a 99% chance of success. Very unfortunately, we're only able right now to help one out of every 10 women and girls who call us for help. It is the hardest part of the job of everybody who works at Tahare to have to say no to so many women and girls that we would like to help and we can't simply because of lack of capacity. 
There is so much more that the Tahereh Justice Center can do. Our model for providing services is efficient. We turn every dollar donated into four of impact. It's effective. We have a 99% success rate and it's replicable. And we've tested that throughout the United States. I don't think that anyone in 1997, when we first got started, could have predicted where we are now. But because of the tremendous need that we've responded to, the incredible army of dedicated staff, incredible board members, and heroic pro bono attorneys, volunteers, donors, and others who enable Tahereh to do its work. We're now in multiple cities throughout the United States and a national leader in public policy advocacy on behalf of immigrant women and girls. We have a long way to go before women and girls are truly protected from violence, but we need that army of support to grow and we need others to join us in the fight for the equality of women and men. In order for the Tahereh Justice Center to protect the lives of even more courageous women and girls, we need financial resources. We need the support of donors who will come forward and help protect women and girls from violence but also help transform society.